Why is Moses commonly depicted with horns? After receiving the Ten Commandments from God atop Mount Sinai, Moses returned to the Israelites with Karanor, when rendered into English horns. To a modern audience this can seem seen startling, even offensive, which is why almost all modern translations of the Bible exclude it, rendering the above line and behold the skin on his face shown. But why would he be shown with horns at all, given all the connotations attached to them? Theory 1, Mistranslation The idea of a horned Moses enters the Christian landscape in the Vulgate Bible, a Latin translation of the Bible, written by St. Jerome in the late 4th century AD that would go on to be the official Latin Bible of the Catholic Church and remain so until 1979. It's suspected that early Hebrew, the original language of the Old Testament which St. Jerome was translating, did not have a word for rays of light so they instead rendered it as horn for its similar shape. Translating directly into Latin, however, St. Jerome used a literal translation, and Moses came back down the mountain with Ten Commandments and two prominent horns. It would appear to be a simple case of oversight on St. Jerome's part, but that doesn't line up with what we know about the man. He had spent much time in the Holy Land, and even consulted with Jewish people on his translation, and was intimately familiar with the Hebrew language, translating many highly esoteric concepts smoothly. It seems odd that he would make such a blatant error. This simple fact has led many to believe that and behold his face at horns was included not as a mistranslation, but as a true rendition of the text, that we may sadly have lost the context to fully appreciate. Theory 2, Horns in the Mountain if you had told a person in St. Jerome's time about the endless TV shows, music, books, operas, plays and movies depicting the devil as more of a tragic anti-hero than the literal embodiment of evil, they would have wept for our souls. Religions are, by nature, based on tradition and remain largely static for hundreds of years before changing. This was as true in St. Jerome's time, as it is in ours and while today horns denote evil, back then it was not so clear. The Old Testament which St. Jerome was translating does not include a description of the devil and at this time, the only animal explicitly linked with evil was the snake. The demonization of horns came later, as Christianity spread and came into conflict with pagan religions. Dozens of horned gods dominated ancient religions, from sin to pan and many, many more. Christianity either amalgamated these beings into representations of angels and demons or co-opted the traditions of these religions for its own ends. One religion builds upon the foundations of another, the New Testament follows the old and so on. What this means, however, is that horns lacked any negative connotations at the time they were written, meaning that when Hebrew writers wrote horns, they may have meant horns, building on older gods that came before to lend credence to Moses and God. To the Israelites, Horns as symbols of power would have been very familiar. Numerous works of theology and literature by many Jews also depict Moses with horns, further evidence that at least for many, it was a very real feature of Moses. Debate still rages about whether or not this was meant to be taken literally, however. Mistranslation or Cultural Misunderstanding When exactly horns gained a negative context isn't clear, but what is clear is that the church held the interpretation of Moses with horns as true. Many anti-Semites have drawn parallels between the horns of Moses and the supposed evilness of the Jewish people, but aside from the blatant offensiveness of such a statement, it fails to acknowledge the cultural context of the time of the Old Testament. As previously mentioned, belief in the horns of Moses, whether figurative or literal, was so widely accepted at one point that Michelangelo, one of the greatest artists of all time, rendered him with horns in his sculpture of Moses, which graces the tomb of Pope Julius II in St. Peter's Basilica. If they were truly a symbol of evil, surely, they would not be allowed in such a holy place? The debate about this odd facial feature rages fiercely to this day, with scholars arguing as to the truth of this interpretation, with most believing it to simply be an incorrect rendering of rays of light, for which there was no word in Hebrew at the time. Perhaps today, given the countless example of anti-Semitic violence, it's pragmatic to remove Moses' horns to dissuade any unsavory connotations. Regardless of today's debates, 
There was once a time when a major prophet in the three Abrahamic faiths, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, which comprise about 4.3 billion people was depicted with horns by one of the greatest artists of all time. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe.